I'm joined as always uh, by uh, my friends Gary. Gary is a uh, stringed instrument enthusiast and partial astronaut. Uh, and uh, he is binary Gary on the internet. And I am joined by my friend Allison, who is a book enthusiast and partial robot. Uh, and she is Allison Plus on the internet. <laughs> Uh, I myself uh, am partially human, uh, especially at this time of the morning, and I'm jazz sequence on the internet, and that's jazz sequence with a three, and you get to guess where the three is located. <laughs> <laughs> three J A Z Z. It's a silent three. It's a choose your own adventure situation. Yeah. One um, of them is correct, and every other one is wrong. So we need like a jazz sequence parody account with threes like all throughout the name. <laughs> What would the parody account tweet? Or maybe that, like, they would tweet more and that would be the parody? I, I was thinking they would like, be like, I'm awesome. It would be like, it would be like, <laughs> the, Nor it would be like the Norcross eBooks uh, parody account that like tweets gibberish from his old tweets. Yeah, okay. That makes Where did I see Norcross last? I just, I feel like I just saw him. Oh, uh, in Atlanta. Yeah. Yeah, at a word camp, obviously. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, went to middle school together. Did you know that? It's an odd fact. I know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. In my early days of doing like WP dev stuff, a friend of mine from high school um, and Norcross were talking. I'm like, wait, how do you know each other? And Norcross is like, we went to middle school together and then found a picture of that yearbook of me posted on the Twitter, which is fantastic. I mean, it's pretty much as nerdy as you could hope for. Good. Uh, yeah, it was, it was, it was pretty rocking. <laughs> I would Rocket. expect nothing less. Um, hey, did I tell you all um, that uh, my dryer broke yesterday morning? No. Mm -hmm. So cool. We're at breakfast. Thing. Yeah, it's pretty exciting. We're at so breakfast. You're wearing and... damp clothing. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's Florida in the summer, so yeah. yes, always. <laughs> yeah, why um, do you even have a dryer? <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, when you get to take them out of the washer, like you make them less soggy. Um, so we were eating breakfast and the dryer has been making noise for a while, but it's an old dryer and I like, well, it's still working so it can make noise. We'll just be inconvenienced by the noise. And then there was this like bang and then continued banging <laughs> and Rhonda went out to look and one of the baffles inside had broken off and was bouncing around with the clothes. And there was like a screw sticking out the side. She's like, we can't use it. <laughs> okay. So I took it, I, I took the whole front off and pulled the drum out and um, there's wheels that support the backside of the dryer. And the hub in one was like gone. So this like rubber wheel had just kind of been like bouncing around a stick or something. Like it wasn't spinning like it was supposed to. So I got two new wheels and a replacement baffle and put it back together this morning and turn it on or tried to turn it on and nothing happened. And then I plugged it in and then it worked. <laughs> and um, so the dryer's fixed. It's my dryer's Is the baffle story. actually the name of the thing? Um, you know, that's a good question. I Googled baffle because that's what I thought it was and it got, it found results. So then when I went to the local store, because I thought, well, I don't want to wait for like a shipment on this. Um, Amazon doesn't like overnight. Well, actually the baffle was available overnight, but the wheel wasn't. So yeah, that was baffling. Um, so I went to the local like <laughs> sketchy, that had to happen at some point in this conversation. Um, I went to the local sketchy appliance repair place um, and um, yeah. And so I told the guy I needed a baffle and he seemed to know exactly what I was talking about. I brought the old one in with me. We found the right part. He said, I'll have it here this afternoon. So he did. And now it's in place. So, so I guess the answer is maybe it's called a baffle, but it's a common enough description of the thing that everyone knew what I was talking about, including the internet. <laughs> I, uh, now I wonder what it's really called. That's oh, one more. Uh, I think that is what it's called. It just it kind of occurred to me that I was just like, I 
never really questioned <laughs> that it was a weird word. <laughs> That's way more uh, handyman than I would have done. I would have been like, oh, the dryer's broken. Time to get a new one. Yeah. Oh, I love. So I, I find great satisfaction in fixing things around the house and making things around the house. Prob I mean, which means my wife is super patient. Um, <laughs> because sometimes things get broken like more than they would be if we just paid someone to do it. Okay. Um, several weeks ago, I, I, I was replacing the kitchen faucet and I broke the shutoff valve. So water was squirting out underneath the sink. So I had to cut <laughs> off the water. That was one of the times that I called a, a plumber. Yeah. Um, because I, I, I don't know how I can fix this one. I've done some amount of plumbing enough to know that I hate plumbing. Yeah. Um, we did we did hook up in our old house. We did hook up the um, uh, maiden extension on the gas line to, to power our gas furnace. Um, that was a thing that we did ourselves. Um, and... Uh, and I don't know that I would want to do that again, but I feel, I don't know. I don't know. I, I don't know why I feel better about gas than, than water. Plumbing. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. Water gets wet, like gas explodes. I, yeah. It's, you know. I feel like uh, water is more tangible, so I'm more comfortable <laughs> with it going wrong. Oh, I've, uh, I've made it go wrong here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. When, uh, so like a decade ago, almost a decade ago, like nine years ago, we knew Tyler was on the way and the, the, Bat, the second bathroom, like by the, what would eventually become the kids' rooms, kind of nasty. So I stripped that down to like just the studs and redid everything in that bathroom, shower, bathtub, vanity, sink, like walls, everything. Um, and uh, and broke a shut off valve in there too. That was fun. <laughs> so it's a tradition. Yep. It, it is. I don't know why. Well, but I haven't broken them several other times when I've done work on like sinks. So it's not like I, it's something I always do, but it's definitely more than... 10% of the time. <laughs> There's a chance that I will, I will cause water to come gushing out of the wall. Well, as long as you know how to shut the water off. Oh yeah, we learned that pretty quickly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah so no, handyman, no, not me. Oh, I hung, um, when we went to Bill Charlotte's room, we were gonna move, it was, her room is where the dining, it's not really a dining room, it's like a, there's a light and you put a dining table underneath it. It was sort of next to the kitchen. I don't know. This is a thing. Um, but so we were closing that in and make Charlotte's room and uh, we had to put the dining room table somewhere. And there's a spot that was just kind of like not the living areas sort of shaped funny and has some weird walls. I'm like, well, it's a good spot for a table right here, but we needed a light over it. So I got up in the attic and cut the hole and put the mounting hardware in and like ran new wire and put a new light switch in the wall and moved the old light from the kitchen. Cause we really like that light to the, Dining room table. Did not shock myself once. See, I I only recently learned. So when uh, we had a, a plumber come in to replace our garbage disposal because our garbage disposal died, because that's not a thing that I do myself. Oh, that's a fun one. It's, it smells. <laughs> yeah, no. Um, so I recommend so, it. So he came over and I was about. I was like, okay, do you, uh, I should probably turn off the like show you the, the circuit breaker is. He's like, oh, don't worry about that. It's off, right? And then. He, changed it whatever and he's like yeah he's like making a joke about how his son uh always freaks out about like electrical stuff like with where there's a switch that turns it on or off and like you know logically i'm like oh well, yeah that actually makes sense because circuits like need to be open for the electricity to go through so if it's off then it's not open there's no electricity so okay that makes sense but we have a, a light switch that was put in uh the ha there's a hall outside the office and there had never been a light in there before um, when we moved in and it's really really dark um and so when we had uh an electrician come in to do some work we said well it would be really nice if we could put like a light in here just to, to give it a little bit more room so he he put in he put in the switch and he put in the, the the mounting stuff and whatever and there's a cable hanging out of it but there's no light because the way that he usually does things is like I'd put all the stuff. I mean, we, we brought him in to do, to do stuff at our old house too. And it's like, he hooked up all the wiring stuff and then there's a bunch of wires hanging out of things. Like it's done. Like you can hook up your stuff if you want. Um, so that's what I did. And, and so to this day, I've been like, yeah, we should probably get that taken care of. So then this, the fast forward to, you know, a week ago, I'm like, oh, maybe that's the thing that I could probably do without shocking myself. And also, yes. if that was a live wire, probably he would lose his license. So that makes sense. <laughs> no. I mean, I mean, probably not. Actually, I mean, obviously. No, no. It's attached to a switch. It's fine. 
It's fine. You don't let kids play with a switch while you're filling with it. So, so then, so we also have a, a light uh, upstairs where um, the baffle broke on our, it's not a baffle, but I'm going to call it a baffle. <laughs> <laughs> um on our on our fluorescent light in the bathroom so like only one fluorescent light sort of half lights up and it's been like that for again like a year and a half uh and oh. so like i figured okay the first task is like is like getting the light in the hall and if i can do that myself then maybe i can upgrade to like actually replacing the whole damn thing because we don't like that light anyway um, you can you can totally do it like plan on it taking way longer than you expect <laughs> but also plan on like sitting down on the couch the afternoon after you do it or the evening after you do it and feeling really damn satisfied. Huh. That's the payoff. It's like, it's as good as like fixing any bug you've ever fixed in code. <laughs> Great way to start the day, fixing the dryer. I don't want to break again anytime soon, but. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you got like, you start, you take the door off and then you take this front panel off and then you take another panel off and then you're like looking, oh, and then the top lips off. So you're looking like into. Sure, but we all like taking things apart. That's not the point yeah, that's of this. Not the point. It's <laughs> like, a point. It's back yeah. together for the problem. <laughs> well, that's that's, that's back. You put it together. You're like, I don't even have any extra pieces this time. <laughs> I often have extra pieces. Usually screws. I'm like, well, seems solid. <laughs> Probably didn't need this one. It's a solid structure. This is fine. Yeah. I mean, I sort of figure like a dryer. It needs some wobble anyway, right? Because it's got weight that's out of balance. So if it shimmies a little, that's fine. As long as it doesn't walk too far. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> but no, all the screws made it back in. So traditionally, um, tra Allison brings a topic. But we're changing it up today. I have two topics. I'm not sure which one. So I'm going to flip a coin. Oh my gosh. You're going to flip a coin with a coin. Yeah, you're going to flip a coin and then you hold up your phone. <laughs> you're not Wait. even flipping a coin. I actually have an analog coin that I could flip oh, like that's probably manually. Better. If you, yeah, because Siri's like, shut up. <laughs> like, um, yeah, so heads will be topic one, tails will be topic two. Okay. You don't know which one is which, so it doesn't matter anyway. Okay, heads is topic one and tails is topic two. Yes. It is tails, topic two. It is tails. Well, let me go over to that tab. Tails never fails. There is a small chance you may know this topic, but I don't think so. Um, if you do, I think you'll have a hard time explaining it anyway. Two's complement. Two's compliment. Yep. Apostrophe S, two's? T W O apostrophe S C O M P L E M E N T. Oh. <laughs> Dead silence. So wow, this is one spot to be in. <laughs> I'd have to meet that solution something. <laughs> this is your first time knowing. Yeah. Uh, so two's compliment. I know once before. Uh, I have two things that are sort of really vaguely formed in my head. Mm -hmm. uh, two's complement is um, uh, option one. Two's complement is is a concept that was uh, originated from uh, Asia. Um, Master Yan C two uh, developed a theory of uh, complementing complementary. Uh, things entities in in the world and uh like yin and yang and light and dark and male and female and etc 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 and so it is the uh idea that that one thing balances the other thing um mr yan yan c2 um <laughs> <laughs> um <laughs> the other option um which is even less uh fully formed in my head uh is it is um uh when you have uh sort of you know like a, a compliment is like like i have a compliment of, of something so like i have a compliment of twos <laughs> and i just bring them around with me wherever i go it's my it's my twos compliment oh have, so like a compliment it's like a like a herd of something uh, yeah like a compliment I, of yeah sweating. exactly like i have i have two kids i have a compliment of twos i have i have two like uh <laughs> grocery baskets so there's a compliment I just wherever yeah. i go just bring in a compliment of twos wherever i like in all in all contexts i like that like a murder of crows a yeah a <laughs> 
When I first heard it, I thought you said an obtuse compliment. Obtuse. An obtuse compliment. <laughs> Which I was just like, well, could be kind of rude, maybe. <laughs> Hmm. it's that's yeah it's kind of a tone deaf compliment like it's, yeah. it's like wow that's that you did really good for a girl yeah like so a little passive aggressive yeah. <laughs> you weren't a well, jerk this time gary <laughs> that's fair like, that, though that's, that's, <laughs> that's an <laughs> obtuse compliment where did i run into that the other day somebody said that to me um at work yesterday i mean We're totally that you're not, that you not, were, not that it, but it was an obtuse compliment. Oh, I tend to use um, the dancing Charmander emo emoji. Um, some would posit that I overuse it. Um, so you're so, a liberal sprinkling. Yeah, yeah, I mean like dozens of times a day. It's my yes, excitement, agreement, um, thumbs up. Go to I don't, I don't think we have a dancing Charmander in our Slack. Neither uh, either our Slack for binary jazz nor uh, the human made Slack. I will. I don't know why. I keep thinking every time I go to respond to something here, like I, I need to move it over and I or copy it over. I guess I wouldn't be moving it. Would you pirate a car? Um, so, um, uh, where was I going with this? Oh, so I said I, he he said something about like um, overusing it, uh, and I agreed. Oh yes, I absolutely do. I'm not going to stop, but I do overuse it. That was it. It was it was silly. I lost it. Maybe, about maybe it. us not having it is like a good weaning process for you, as far as like a stop. That that, that suspects that I need to wean from it. I I have no problem with it. Other people have problems with it. <laughs> <laughs> Spoken like a true. Whenever I want. <laughs> I'm sure I'm using whatever. Is it I want. my problem? Is your problem? <laughs> Yeah, I fear for the day someone replaces it with like a, a different emoji just for the fun of it. And they won't have any ideas to the the outcome, how it'll affect you. I The story behind it, <laughs> there's a great story behind it. I did something and someone like, you know, often people will like frame like text with like emoji border on top and bottom. So someone did that with Dancing Charmander. I thought it was fantastic. It made me laugh. Not really a big Charmander fan, but... Like at, at that point in the day, like I was really struggling with some code, things were not getting done. So I started uh, like three messages in a row, I replied with Charmander in a fairly busy channel and decided that's it. The rest of the day, I'm going to reply, I'm going to emoji every comment in this channel. Mm -hmm. So I did like to the point where like people were messaging me like, um, this is like ridiculous, it's hysterical. Um, <laughs> and so I just kept doing it kept doing it. And it was like, I mean, it was like serious conversation about like some feature that was breaking on this project that was like pretty much blowing up in every way possible. So it's pretty stressful time interspersed with dancing Charmander. So finally one of the things I was working with was like, can we, pl and I, and then at that point it, like the chatter died down. So I started like narrating what I was doing on another project and replying with or emojiing with Charmander just to keep it going. <laughs> so finally I've got pissed and was like, can we please keep the chatter down? I'm trying to work here. And so I, I did pause it at that point. But I mean, there's like a four hour window of my day that I spent Charmander emojiing everything. It's Hundreds of them. Yeah. No, no exaggeration. And then at that point it became my thing. I adopted the emoji and now everywhere I go, it works like it follows me. Sort of like the dusty stick. Yeah. yeah. I've had, I've had like five people message me that article from Vice or whatever about the origin of the dusty stick. I'm like, That's okay, I, I think it's part of my branding. I think I've carried that from Slack channel to Slack channel. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I still don't get it. <laughs> <laughs> Having read that article, I'm like, okay. <laughs> it's just like it can be whatever you want it to be. It's either yeah. it's either positive or negative. It's either yes. good or bad. It's it's both. It's all the things. It's, it's two's I'll compliment. It's two's compliment. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Kind of is. I think two's complement is a mathematical equation that kind of ties into the idea of like creating a binary of like a complementary palette, but like more mathematical than that. I, I couldn't speak to the math part of it. It's just not mine. I'm too arty. <laughs> you're amazingly close, actually. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like it's like if you're if you're on a color wheel, it'd be like the the offset color on the other side of the wheel. The Ooh, the, I like um, that idea. No. But again, it's that visual <laughs> nature of the color yeah. that appeals to me. 
when I don't know something, I assume it's a mathematical equation. That's also my, my default. <laughs> That's fair. <laughs> there, I wonder if there's, I wonder if there's like a, like equations you should know for dummies book, but not called for dummies. You know, I would totally get it if it was for dummies. I wouldn't want get it if it wasn't for dummies. <laughs> yeah. I've decided to stop supporting that book franchise. Although it's not like my, like, protest has been very active. It's I haven't bought a for dummies book in a decade or more. So, do you yeah, buy a lot I, of books? I haven't either. Nah. <laughs> no, no. If I buy books, it is because they are interesting to me, and they are often at the. Um, huge secondhand bookstore in downtown Jax. So I'm like, oh, this is fascinating. Like, here's a nerdy one. Hold on. <clears throat> if you're going to do a book show, then I'm going to do a book show. Yeah, I think that's Everybody's fine. leaving their screens now. This is chaos. <laughs> Wait, where did it go? Well, while you're, while you're looking, I will reveal the two books oh. I most recently purchased, which are both D&D &D books. Ooh. Um, you're, you're deep diving at this yeah. point. You thought I, this was going to be a casual endeavor. Uh, I mean, I knew that it was going to, I knew that it was going to go down the rabbit hole. These are both uh, adventures for like in the future. Uh, mm -hmm. And they're both things that, that I was interested in anyway. This is um, a book of adventures that are all like seat nautical. Um, mm -hmm. So it's a bunch of just stuff that's from, from past, from old D and D uh, things that have been converted to fifth edition, um, just stuff on the sea, which I thought was a really cool idea. Um, this one uh, is sort of a, a caper, spy, like not necessarily super combat-y, but like uh, intrigue kind of thing uh, in an urban setting, uh, which sounded really cool. Um, yeah. fun, fun fact, I actually heard that either this one or there's another one that comes after this um, called uh, something, something the Mad Mage or something. Um, and one or the other of those, there's a non-player character who uses um, uh, they, them pronouns and will correct the player characters anytime they misgender them. Hmm. Which I thought was a pretty cool thing. And I think that there might be a character in here um, that is a woman that is looking for her wife. Her wife is missing. Mm -hmm. um, I was reading an article recently about how um, uh, the current Dungeons and Dragons uh, franchise has been make, taking pains to um, add a lot more like uh, diversity and equality and inclusive inclusion and stuff in their stories, which I thought was really really cool. Oh, that's interesting. Yep. Ugh, I'm always I'm always here for a heist. What What do you think? I, I mean, I, you're not the only person I've heard recently uh, getting back into D and D. What do you think is the the driving force for that? Is it just nostalgia or? No, I don't. I mean, okay. I think part of it is nostalgia. I think that um, I think that one big thing is that Wizards of the Coast. Um, so so Dungeons and Dragons used to be owned by TSR and that was after it was owned by Gary Gygax and whatever his, his company was. Neither Gary Gygax's company nor TSR really had a crap ton of money. Um, TSR was always sort of strapped for cash. They were really good at, at building at building the world and building the games and producing them, but they were always sort of strapped for cast and always sort of like trying to find something that's going to be the next big like revenue generator. Um, Wizards of the Coast is already established. They, they built their brand largely um, from Magic the Gathering um, and then other things that sort of went along with that. So they already have like, you know, basically a stockpile of money. Um, so when they bought the rights for, for D and D um, it meant that D and D just automatically had a huge like like financial support so that means they had a lot more freedom to 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 push the brand and to make it to put it into people's hands i think that fifth edition in particular um the reason why it's it's such a big thing now that people are getting into is fifth edition is a lot more accessible than earlier versions of of D, &D in terms of the rules and, and getting into it and there's been a lot more focus since fifth edition in like bringing it to um younger like generations and 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 also like i think just just making it more i think the diversity thing is not a mistake and not a not an accident i think they're being intentional about that and trying to appeal to a wider audience um i, I think that they're just like doing a really good job of of, of um of 
promoting uh, promoting it and and marketing it. That's super interesting. I went to the uh, Wizards of the Coast site and I realized that they own the Avalon Hill brand too, which before they were um, known for access and allies and risk and that kind of stuff, they had a lot of really um, interesting like board games. I was too young to be into board games. My uncle was into them. So I have a couple of his old games like Dispatcher is a railroad game where you function as a dispatcher and there's hundreds of little cardboard trains that you have to run across a track and meet the timetables and avoid getting demerits for late shipments and whatnot. It's, but they also had like some like hiking ones where the topographic maps. I, yeah. That's a super, I, that's super fascinating. All of that. All of that. Yeah. I've been, you know, I I've been, I've been like pretty glad in comparison. So <laughs> the, um, the, the dark sun podcast that I um, have been following for a while um, they interview like people who worked on the original dark sun. And a lot of those people are from, I mean, uh, all those people are from like the TSR days when TSR owned uh, advanced dungeons and dragons or dungeon dragon second edition. Um, so um, they, they provide little nuggets of insight about like how TSR sort of worked and the common thread in all of them is like, yeah, we were in a hurry. It was, it was sort of a rush job. Um, they didn't really like have, they worked with a lot of contractors for game design. Um, they like had their own in-house staff, but a lot of times for stuff that they weren't really sure about, or they, they didn't want to devote their in-house staff for, they'd like work with, with outside contractors, people, largely people that they like met at conferences and stuff, um, who were, who submitted them their, their stuff at conferences. Um, so like, it, the impression that I get is that TSR is sort of always sort of strapped for cash and trying to find like the next thing that's going to bring it to, to fund them. And ultimately they, they, I mean, that's why they crashed is because they ran out of funding. Um, so, yeah. I don't, I don't speak from any like really real sense, like position of authority and just sort of things that I've, I've picked up. Great. Now the topic is the capability maturity, maturity model guidelines for improving the software process. From Carnegie Mellon University Software Engineering Institute, published in 1994. So that's super exciting. That's that's two's compliment. No, nope, that's um, that's oh, the that's book, the that, book that you got most it. recently. Okay. I was super fascinated by what they thought software development would look like in the mid 90s. Hmm. <laughs> That'll uh, yeah, they're will be like in the future, women will wear pants. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, they're like this version control thing might be something. <laughs> might, be, might be worth a, a second look. <laughs> so yeah. you don't buy books, Gary? Like not ever? Like, like I mean, I do. I don't know what the last book I bought. What I do? Damn it! I do know the last <laughs> book I bought. It's like a recent book. Um, you know, they're mostly they're mostly tech books recently. Do you do so you read patterns, learning you, PHP design patterns? Do you read to your kids? Yes. Hopefully not but, learning PHP patterns. Yeah, because they do buy books for them. Yes, but they um, it's probably they like like, to, like kid books at this point. Yeah, but they like to like curl up in their bed and read for hours on end. So yeah. they have uh, a great appetite for um, fiction, and I used to, and I just I'm sure I would if I sat down and like opened something fictional. But I, I haven't was, in a while. I was thinking about that this morning actually. It's my Kindle. Uh, I have a. Um, so we just started doing these personal development plans at work uh, and it's just but basically a bunch of goals that you have for the next foreseeable future. Like you put, you give yourself like a deadline where you want to like sort of review your progress or whatever and, and what it would like, how it would benefit you and ever. And I was thinking this morning, like I should put like, I want to read more as, as one of my goals on my, on my PDP because um, like I enjoy reading. I just always feel like I don't have time for it. Um, and I feel like that's a shitty excuse because you make time for things if you care about them. Um, and, and I just haven't made time. But also what helps is like actually having a specific thing that you want to read. Cause like I go through cycles. I love, I know I love reading, but like, unless I'm on a roll of being like, Ooh, there's that one specific thing that came in for me at the library or mm -hmm. whatever, whatever it is, then I'm not going to sit down and make time to read a random book that I'm not that into. <laughs> See, I, I've always had a, a backlog of books that I that were on my list. Yeah. Um, so like, I and I'm and I read slower. Like Aaron reads, 
ridiculously fast. She will she will chomp through a a like a full novel in like two days or three days, you know. Um, whereas like I'm still working on it after like a month. Um, so so yeah, um, it it I always I'm always behind, and there's always other things that that like just get added to the bottom of the list, um, and then I never get through them because I I don't I don't make time. <laughs> Here's a funny thing. So Kindle, like my Kindle obviously contains books, but I always like don't think of those as books, right? So I don't know why. Packing for Mars, The Curious Science of Life in the Void is my most recent like for fun book. Yeah, I also don't really include in in books that I read, like books that I'm reading for the kids or um or books that that like Aaron and I started reading. Um, Your audio is cut off completely for me, Chris. <laughs> wow, nice. Oh, I can hear you just fine. <laughs> Sad Allison, days. can you can you hear us? Hear me? I can hear you, Gary. I'm just kidding. I'll translate for Chris. <laughs> okay, cool. uh, I'll I'll turn my audio off and back on, and then in the meantime, Come on. let me catch you up. He says he hasn't bathed in close to a week. Go ahead. <laughs> You're back. I can hear it. Everything's fine. Ah, <laughs> this was gonna be I was going to say that I, I don't include, uh, Aaron and I have started reading a series, the, the Louise Penny, um, the Inspector Gamache uh, series. Um, and we've been reading those. She's already read through all of them. So like, it, it's like, you need to read these, let's read them together sort of thing. Uh, I don't include that. And I don't include uh, books that I read to the kids, which is currently Lord of the Rings. Um, the last the last book, the last book of the last book of Lord of the Rings. Oh, wow. That's hefty. Yeah. Do you do audiobooks at all? We do lots of audiobooks. Um, mm -hmm. They listen to audiobooks like all the time in the car and on trips and things. Um, and I, I enjoy audiobooks when I'm driving. I, I can't listen to, I can't listen to speaking when I'm working. Yeah. Uh, I find. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, I, I don't listen to books, uh, audiobooks. Um, often myself unless I'm like doing something like I've, I've listened to them at, at times when I was like working on stuff in the yard um, so now it's time for Gary to tell us what two's compliment is two's complicate complicate okay <laughs> compliment easy for me to say is the um math is a mathematical operation on binary numbers and basically in computing it is the way we differentiate positive and negative integers using just binary what <laughs> yeah. So it sounds really cool. You use it a billion times a day and have no idea. Yeah. But negative, positive and negative integers, um, it's cool. Like if you take a binary representation of an integer, um, if it starts with a zero, the rest would be whatever. Add a one, invert the rest of it, and then, um, and then add one to the end, whatever that does to the rest of the binary. That's the negative of the number you had. And it works going back too. So if you invert the number, add one again, now you're back to where you were. Super fascinating. Two's, Two's complement. Yeah. Interesting. It is interesting. Chris, you sound but, disappointed. Yeah, I am disappointed. Uh, I mean, it is interesting, but I'm disappointed that it wasn't uh, from Master Chi Yun to or Chi Yi or whatever I said earlier. <laughs> <laughs> There's some pretty, like, the Wikipedia article has some pretty heavy math, which is why I was Allison, I'm like, ah, what? How? <laughs> I thought, Wouldn't like, you, you have loved like, like some secret part formula? Was just like I was a math major in college. I don't know why you guys <laughs> use compliment. Clearly, <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I would have like, hidden hidden gem of knowledge. <laughs> that would have been amazing. Would have been amazing. Um, yeah. The other one was. Uh, should I keep the other topic? Keep it under your under your hat for the yeah, future. Yeah. 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 Okay. Hang on to that one. Uh, we've got a few Allison questions. Uh, <laughs> again, if you would like to ask us questions on the air, if you're out there and you listen, uh, you can you can email us through the form on our website, binaryjazz.us, or you can hit us up on on the Twitters, uh, which is at binaryjazz. Uh, and um, yeah, also uh, fun fact: we're on Spotify now and Stitcher, and uh, Ooh. yeah, those, What's a Spotify? If, if if you use those things. Oh. Um, what's a Spotify? Oh, wait, I do actually. I have. I was going to say you're you're lying. I know you use yeah. Spotify. You sent me a link the other day. I did. I finally jumped on a Spotify bandwagon. Yeah. Although I haven't been billed, so we'll see what happens when it comes close to the end of the month. 
<laughs> I used Spotify around. for free happily for a really long time, and I only got I only started paying for it when like um, basically it came to be the point where the kids really really wanted to have like or really wanted to have access to music and like Spotify was the easiest way to do that. Uh, that was not like just pirating um yep without without remorse <laughs> with, with a band like, with a band yeah with a band and just pirating just so much and stuff that i really don't want to <laughs> um so so yeah and also like i feel like it, it allows for a little bit more discovery than than um that that would uh support um, i'm like 20 yeah. hours and 28 hour classical music playlist wow, wow. yeah <laughs> That's yeah. pretty hardcore. That's a glimpse into your psyche. <laughs> um, so uh, I guess one of the questions that we could do. So yeah, you can you can contact us. Uh, you can find us on Spotify and things. Um, who would win in a fight, a robot or a dinosaur? I guess it uh, depends. On, I guess it depends on the size of the robot. <laughs> if we're talking, if we're talking about giant robot, then then I think probably giant robot would would or the dinosaur would beat a dinosaur. I mean, um, yeah, I guess it depends on the scale of the dinosaur too. If we're if we're talking about the the if they're relative scales, if if like the the robot is is relatively as the same size within as 10%, the dinosaur, yeah. yes, I think that's fair. Yeah, then so okay, let's make that as, let's make that assumption. That there's yep. a relative scale thing going on. Um, I thought it was absolute mayhem. I feel like I feel like the robot would win. I feel like the robot yeah. would win because metal is harder than flesh. Yeah, you're wrong. <laughs> so the dinosaur would win. <laughs> the dinosaur would win. I mean, this is like a species that was built for like, like, I'm assuming a large carnivorous. Okay, dinosaur. so but but large carnivorous flesh, dinosaurs. Chomp, one bite, motor's done. That's it. Wheel spin. What are you going to do? Large carnivorous to... dinosaurs have evolved uh, to attack smaller dinosaurs. They have not. They were not evolved late, to like to huge bone fight. Late to protect their internal organs. Like it just crushes through. They and were, I guess they, they, were, were, they did not evolve to to fight metal. And metal it's a, is a, a is it? A... Then it's probably a more fair fight. If you're talking about like prehistoric times, that robot is just out of luck, man. There's no place to recharge. <laughs> Well, that's probably a big part of it too. <laughs> I don't know if I would go on that long that they would need to recharge. I figured there would be a uh, yeah, like a like a time rift the, where the robot just magically uh, teleported into into prehistoric times. Says, I I, I, I I think that I think I mean the other the other part that comes into it is that some dinosaurs were sort of pack animals, and and you, if you just took a single dinosaur against a robot, maybe that dinosaur might not win. But maybe if you took a group, like if it's hunting in its natural uh, state. Uh, like a bunch of them, uh, then they would totally rip oh. apart the robot. I think it flips it on its head. So if you had like a team of robots versus a team of dinosaurs, I think the robots <laughs> are smart. You sacrifice one robot and then boom, the would attack comes. One robot be more tactical than a dinosaur? Thank you for listening to Binary Jazz. If you like this episode, you can subscribe to us on iTunes or Google Play. You can visit us online at binaryjazz.us or follow us on Twitter at at binaryjazz. Don't forget that you can ask us a question through the form on the website or on Twitter, and we'll read it aloud on the next episode of Binary Jazz.